thank y'all for having us and giving us the opportunity to talk about something that he and I are very passionate about. Um, our partners, um, unfortunately, I don't have one anymore. I lost mine a couple, uh, several years back. Um, but, I mean, there are not only are they our partners, they're also our kids. You know, we're, we're an agency that, you know, we allow our handlers to take our dogs home and actually have them at our house. A lot of agencies want them kept there on the grounds of the actual agency. Well, we're lucky enough for ours to go home and the worst thing that we probably do is we treat them like our kids. I mean, I was the, I was the world's worst of letting mine climb into bed next to me or lay in the bed next to me and, and not put him in his kennel like he should be and not, you know, and treat him like a tool, I treated him like a child. Um, but we're, uh, you know, we're, we're excited to have the canine handlers that we have. We have two different handlers. We have uh, Sergeant Calhoun and uh, Sergeant Keegan Daniel. Um, so we, we appreciate the job that they do now as our handlers. They do a phenomenal job, but I'm going to turn it over to Sergeant Calhoun and let him kind of tell you where our canine has, where our unit has come from, from the very first dog to the dog that a lot of people are familiar with, and that was our canine that was killed several years ago, canine narco in the line of duty. Um, but I'm going to let him tell you all about it and where we are today and how proud we are of our canine unit. Major said, thank you all for having us here today. One thing about uh, canine handlers is if you give us the opportunity to talk about our dogs, we're going to take it every time. Uh, like I said, we're going to talk a little bit about where our dogs came from over the years, the dogs we've had, and how our dogs work. Y'all get to be the guinea pigs for this presentation, so bear with me. Okay? <laughs> I did it at 2 o'clock this morning. All right, our canine unit started sometime around 2000, I believe. Is that, is that correct? Is the best I could fine so we've had them going now for almost 20 years um, go ahead and go to the next one. our first canine was canine Nero uh, he was handled by deputy Vic Anthony I was unfortunately not able to get a picture for you guys of this dog uh, he was our first uh, uh, Major Mike Parrish and his canine narco he was in service from 2001 to 2003 Narco was the one that was killed in the line of duty, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Sergeant Jeff Hinkle had K9 Red. He was a bloodhound tracking dog, and he was handled in service from 2002 to 2008. Major Wood looking fancy back in the day with uh, K9 Ace. A lot younger. <laughs> and his second dog, Kilo. Uh, Sergeant Fraley and K9 Audra, another bomb dog we had. I'd love to tell y'all a story about her. That's the ones you never want to see sit. If you ever see them alert, you don't want to be anywhere near the leash. Um, Oops. Wrong one. Yeah, bear with my clicker over there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, those are uh, K9 Ivan, Deputy Howard Miles handled him. I'm going to go to the next one. Talk a little bit about why we use dogs. Police canines are used for many different specific tasks. Uh, the one we use the most out of these is going to be scent detection. Within all the different categories that these dogs are used for, and there's plenty of them, there are several subcategories, and we're going to talk most about scent detection today. Canines utilize their sense of smell in order to detect certain odors that have been marked as target odors. These odors can range from this whole list plus many, many more. Uh, bomb odors is one of the most interesting ones to me because there's so many different odors that these dogs are uh, trained on. Uh, canine breeds, they're most commonly used for police dogs. They have around 250 million scent receptors in their nose. And to put that into perspective, we have about 6 million. So you can do the math there and figure out how much stronger their nose is than ours. Not only do they have um, so many more than we do they also have different types where we have pretty much one type of scent receptors in our nose these dogs have several different ones which allow uh, what's called scent discrimination this allows the dog to be able to tell the different 
uh, make up to a single odor that we smell. So if we smell a particular odor, they can smell different components of that odor. Uh, this is e easiestly explained as the stew theory. So if you think about it, when you got a stew cooking on the stove and you go in and you smell the stew cooking, a dog will come in the room and he can smell the chicken broth, the uh, salt, pepper, the carrots, everything in it, he can smell it uh, independently. That's just a little visual uh, representation of, of how the dog's nose works. They have a lot more surface area than we have um, for those receptors in their nose. So all dogs can smell. Most people probably notice their dogs are always have their nose in the air or down on the ground. How we see with our eyes and that's how we perceive the world and largely these dogs perceive the world with their nose mainly. Uh, police canines are bred over generations to have an enhanced hunt drive and enhanced prey drive. Once a canine is selected, they are imprinted on target odors at an early age. And hunt drive is just the instinctual drive for a dog to hunt for prey and the prey drive is the instinctual drive for a dog to conquer that prey. And that's what we use pretty much to make them find drugs. The way, we, the way they're trained, um, dogs don't have cognitive reasoning like we do. They their reasoning is by association. So to them, A plus B equals C every time. The biggest thing with that is you can't put anything in between A plus B equals C or it doesn't work. Uh, so this, this translates to the target odor that they're imprinted on at that early age. We combine that with an alert. Um, dogs are trained different ways to do an alert. We do a passive alert, which I'll talk about in just a second, but pretty much what it comes down to is the target odor they smell, they show us some type of alert, and that equals a reward for them. Dogs don't get a paycheck, or at least our working dogs. You didn't break it, did you? Probably. No, no, back in business. Um, anyways, dogs don't get a paycheck. Their paycheck is their reward. So we hype that up for them. Uh, drug detection dogs are most commonly used to detect marijuana, cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamines. Within these four categories, there are several derivatives and other mainstream <coughs> drugs um, because the components of these other mainstream drugs also have um, these four odors in them, which is kind of why it's important for this scent discrimination because ecstasy, for example, is partially made up by methamphetamines and a dog a lot of times will alert on ecstasy simply because it has methamphetamines in it. And you can detect that it has that specific odor and a bigger odor. Uh, our canines are trained to do a passive alert. That means pretty much whenever they are in the presence of a target odor, they alert and tell us that they're in the presence of a target odor by sitting. Uh, you'll see some dogs will scratch at uh, their target odor and things like that. We don't do that because the biggest way we use our dogs is on traffic stops and nobody wants to pay, especially our boss wants to pay for people's cars if they scratch them up. So. And going back on that one, the dog's paycheck, when I was talking about a reward, these dogs, um, our dogs at least, use tennis balls. To them, that is the world begins and ends with a tennis ball. <laughs> uh, canine doesn't, we're going to look at a little bit about their point of view. The canine doesn't realize that he is looking for drugs. To him, he's looking for the rabbit. And this is where that enhanced hunt drive comes into effect. That's going to be your fuel that makes him do what he does. That's going to be his fuel for the search. Uh, we, bring a, we bring the dogs into a search area and they're told to hunt, so that's when they start sniffing up and down. They're trying to, they're looking for the rabbit, uh, which is essentially their reward. Once they find the odor, they sit. Um, now that the dog has satisfied the equation and the rabbit's supposed to appear, they don't realize that we throw the ball in there to them or we are the ones that reward them. In their mind, when they smell the odor, they give us an alert, the ball disappears, the rabbit appears, in theory at least. A little bit about how we utilize our canines. Um, by far, the one we use the most is gonna be traffic stops. We also use them on narcotic search warrants. Um, one we've used kind of recently is when people were driving down the road, running from the police, throwing drugs out the window. Um, that one's kind of a fun one because sometimes you'll walk at quite a distance trying to figure out where they threw it out at. We use our dogs in the jail for contraband searches on uh, prison blo or jail blocks. We use them in schools, on lockers, and public requests. Uh, public requests is gonna be more so when people run across questionable things, or they've had somebody staying with them or borrowing their car or something like that, and they have some questions about the people that might have been in there. We'll go out and, and check everything out for them. 
to tell y'all something funny about this one. <clears throat> Earlier when he said that they look for their tennis balls, do you know how many schools have tennis balls on their, <laughs> their desk, chairs, and their chairs? <laughs> A lot. <laughs> you want to know what a dog's face looks like when it's confused? <laughs> Take a working dog in a, in a school. <laughs> because he'll look at you like, what is going on here? It's a rabbit thing. What about the jail contraband? How often do y'all find that? Usually we find something just about every time we, de we deploy the dogs in the jail, somewhere in the jail. And that can range anywhere from somebody that had brought it, that came in and brought brought in something, smuggled it up to the block, to your road crew um, that goes out and does work out in the county, somebody slipping them something or leaving them something. But we, we find stuff we find <coughs> pretty regularly at the jail, and that's turned over to our jail investigators, and they can deal with that. Here's a little video to show you kind of how these things work when you combine them all. Okay. There's supposed to be a video. Go down to the bottom left, you'll get a play button. You might have to have another video operator. <laughs> nice, just move this slide. You have to pause the slider so we can get one. You got another suggestion, Rob? No. Okay. I had to, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I had to do some file management in the parking lot a while ago, so I guess that video got lost with the file. Uh, pretty much all those in that is just showing you how this dog works in action. Uh, a lot of people ask us about what kind of training we go through with the dogs. Uh, we do a handler's course, the minimum time requirement, and it, a lot of that too depends on what kind of dogs you're handling. If you're just doing a scent detection dog um, for single purpose, it's a minimum of three weeks, and that includes hands-on training. It has to be from a certified police canine trainer. At the end of the training, we have to get certified with our dogs, and the certification that we have currently is through the National Narcotic Detector Dog Association and they require that we go through six rooms with four target odors and six cars with four target odors. All this is done within a time period and the dogs can have no false alerts. We also get, we're actually really lucky to get to do this. Uh, Sheriff Lockhart sends us down to Dothan every year for a week long annual canine seminar. And this is where they bring in people they had trainers coming as far from as far as from Europe last year that actually work with these dogs where they're born. <clears throat> that have just phenomenal experience that they can work out any issues that might have come up over the last year or anything like that. Uh, we get the first three days and that's all all day long, hands-on training. Um, the, like I said, these people come from all over to teach us things that maybe we might have missed along the way or just sharpen our tools a little bit. On the fourth day, there's a competition. Um, last year, there was 40 plus teams as far as Baytown, Texas, Houston, Texas, all the way up to, I think we had a team there from Washington, maybe. And of course, several regional teams, but that just goes to show how good this training is that we go to as people come as far as Texas just to attend it. And on the fifth day, is just an award ceremony. All right, we're gonna meet the dogs that we currently have in service today. This is me and Canine Ice. He is a uh, Belgian Malinois. He's the one that I handle. I've had him now for two and a half years. He's probably our uh, most handsome dog. Yeah. So he's pretty majestic, right? Yes. <laughs> but he's really a big baby. Like I said, Ace. Uh, Ace. Ice is an eight year old Belgian Malinois. He was born in Western Europe and country of Holland. One thing that I was really surprised to learn is that he had a passport when I got him. How many, how many dogs have passports? I didn't know that was a thing. Uh, ICE was selected and imported into the United States by a kennel company called Von Lick Kennels. Uh, they're from Denver, Indiana. The sheriff's office drove up there and picked him up in, I believe, 2012, the best I can figure out. And he became our newest member to the sheriff's department's family. ICE returned back and was put into service. ICE was originally handled by Deputy Miles until I got him in 2017. Uh, we, of course, primarily serve Chambers County, but we also get called out to um, Lee County, Randolph County, Tallapoosa County, 
uh, state narcotic agents, and those can range from all kind of different detection call outs. Um, and that's all the agencies within those counties as well. We've deployed, me and ICE have deployed more than 75 times in the last two and a half years, and many of these deployments have resulted in the detection of illegal drugs and illicit drug money that would have otherwise went undiscovered. This is our other canine, uh, canine Otos. Uh, he is handled by Sergeant Daniel. One of the most common questions that we get at these demos is, what are the dogs, and this is where Major Stolman Thunder earlier. Uh, what do the dogs do when they're not at work? And how do, you know, where do they live, how do they spend their off time? Not only are they part of you know, our families, of course, they're part of the Sheriff's Office family. Uh, they live with us, which means that we spend more time with our dog than we do our spouses and children a lot of the time. You have to think, when you go to work, you leave your spouse and children at home. We don't, we take our dog. Uh, when we're off duty, kind of the same thing, they're right there under us, especially Ice. He feels the need to follow my every move. Whatever I'm doing, he's, he's doing, or feels like he needs to be doing. If I'm cutting grass, he's watching me out the window. Uh, his favorite things to do when he's off duty is follow me around everywhere, lay on the couch when my wife isn't home, uh, play in the yard, chewing on his toys. Uh, for some reason, he likes to do stealthy attacks on a vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I don't really know where that comes from, but in two and a half years, he still finds it super entertaining. And he does separate things out. Yes. Um, to make wood. I don't know, I think that was an exaggeration, but he does not like babysitting for me. <laughs> so when, you, when you're, if you're on vacation or something, you don't take him to one of the office. Some, somebody else with an apartment has got to gotta put up with him for a couple days, yeah. and he don't he don't like being separated. Mm -hmm. Not at all, especially not at his element, because he, he brought him to my house, you know, and I put him in the house, and he moved about our house just as, man, nighttime come, and it, it, he lost his mind, whining and crying. Like a child. I told him, I said, this thing has lost his mind, boy. I think TJ's exactly to him, but. <laughs> Thank you. 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 <laughs> he would have let him up in bed with him or something. Uh, one of my favorite quotes is, uh, dogs do speak, but only those that know how to listen. And that goes for not just working dogs, but uh, you would be surprised how smart you know, your house dog is. It would really surprise you. You just have to take the time to figure out what they're trying to tell you. 